quite tasty, actually. What is up, family of potatoes? We are back in the kishti <laughs> with a new muscle building, high protein shake. We all know that whey protein is a great source of protein to have post workout. But what happens if you do not actually have access to a protein powder or you struggle to hit your protein needs and you need to make a protein shake without protein powder? <laughs> I'm going to show you that with a non-protein powder whey protein shake having 30 grams of protein. So as you can see for this shake you do not need many luxurious ingredients. Firstly we have some fat free Skyer yogurt from Lidl. If you don't have this you can still use that Faye or essentially any fat free yogurt. As you can see the macros are amazing. 9 grams of protein per 100 grams fat free. Then we have some skimmed milk, again pretty high in protein and practically all fat free. And finally to add some more flavour to your shake, any frozen berry will do. Frozen in particular if you want it to be nice and thick. But today we are going for frozen raspberries because as you can see this yoghurt is raspberry flavour so we're going to have a, a raspberry orgy. Did somebody order sausage? Wow, so we're gonna have to weigh out our ingredients, get a shaker cup. Oh, I forgot to mention, a sort of prerequisite is a good blender. I have a salter or a Nutribullet or any poverty blender will do perfectly fine. And a spoon, pop your shaker, level it out. So what we are gonna do to start out is add the liquid. We're gonna add 300 grams of the skim milk. Perfect. No! Well, close enough. Jesus Christ, my hands are in tatters. Anyway, next we're gonna add in 200 grams of your fat-free yogurt of choice. Ooh, beautiful! Perfetto! And finally, to add in a bit of flavor, you're gonna add in 30 grams of your frozen berry of choice. Perfect! Now, as an extra, if you do have them, some my protein white chocolate flavor drops are key if you want to really make your protein shake nice and sweet. Also, if you're a fan of cinnamon, you can add that in at this stage to add a bit of spice to it. But we are going to go for a few drops of the white chocolate. Boop, 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 boop. That should be enough. Get the lid. Nice and tight. To the blender we go. So we literally do not need to blend this for very long. Pop it open. And of course, a protein shake would not be a protein shake unless it was served in a shaker cup. So we're just gonna pour it in to the shaker, and that's gonna pretty much be it. Beautiful. Top it with the lid. Bring it on. And that is that, my friends. A muscle building protein shake using no protein powder whatsoever. Now I'll put the macros on the screen, but essentially for this bad boy, you are talking 30 grams of protein, 25 grams of carbs, and one gram of fat. So it is very macro friendly. And of course the option is always there to turn it into a bulking shake and add more calories through the addition of oats, honey, peanut butter. Do the peanut butter jelly, peanut butter jelly, peanut butter jelly with a baseball bat. All of that jazz, but today I try to keep it as macro friendly for the dieter and for the bulker and try to replicate the macros as best I could to some of the most popular protein supplements on the market. So without further ado, let's get a quick taste test. Oh, it's real thick, really good actually. Sorry. <laughs> that tastes better than some of the protein powders that you would actually buy. So yeah, tastes good and you still get your protein kick, so win-win situation. Mm. Very good. So, now that's over, let's finish this video with a bit more value and go over the science behind protein powders. Do you need them? Which is best? Blah, blah, blah. Boop. Boom. We are back in the man cave. You seem to like this more sort of formal style of video, but let's quickly address this topic. Do you need whey protein to maximize your gains? No. Okay, so in general, when you are talking about your protein goals, as you can see, research by Philips et al. 2001 states that athletes seeking to gain lean muscle mass and strength require higher amounts of dietary protein. Common sense, if you want to grow new muscle, you need to eat enough protein in order to generate more muscle protein to build that muscle mass. Therefore, again, as you can see, in general, intakes of 1.3 to as high as 2 grams per kilogram per day of protein are usually advised, again, depending on certain factors such as whether you are in a 
a deficit or a surplus, the former requiring more protein and the latter requiring less, how much muscle mass you carry, how often or how hard you train, your age, etc. But overall, a safe rule to live by is a ballpark range of 1.6 grams per kilogram per day. And that is what most researchers will recommend. So here's the sort of caveat that you may not actually want to believe. You can achieve that 1.6 gram per kilo through whole food dietary protein alone without whey protein supplementation and make the exact same amount of gains as if you were to supplement with whey protein, okay? You do not need to supplement with whey protein to maximize your gains. And this is strongly confirmed by a huge systematic review, meta-analysis and meta-regression of 49 studies on the effect of protein supplementation on resistance training induced gains in muscle mass by Morton et al. 2010 who concluded that protein supplementation beyond total protein intakes of 1.62 grams per kilogram per day resulted in no further resistance training induced gains in fat free mass. This is therefore like a peach paper showing that supplementation with whey protein is only needed in order to achieve your 1.6 grams per kilogram per day and that whey protein is just there for you to supplement your diet with if you can't actually hit your personal 1.6 grams per kilogram per day. Then and only then in this case might further supplementation of whey protein be beneficial. So if this is you and you cannot hit your protein goal, which protein supplement is best according to the research to help you in achieving your 1.6 grams per kilogram per day? So normally when you're talking about protein powders, you're either referring to whey protein or casein protein. So which one is best? To answer this, I'd like to pull from a Q study by Kandra et al. 2016, who assessed the effects of whey, casein, or milk protein ingestion on muscle protein synthesis after exercising. And they found that when it comes to whey protein, consumption not only causes hyperaminoacidemia, but also additional amino acid oxidation, thereby contributing to a reduction in nitrogen retention. And for those of you interested, the references to the studies mentioned there are actually from Boyery et al. 1997 and Dangan et al. 2001, both of which I have read and are very good reads if you have the time. Highly recommended. Anyway, let's go back to that Kandra et al. 2016 study because they continue on from here stating that, on the other hand, ingestion of casein protein causes a slower but prolonged amino acidemia and and it has the best leucine net balance during the entire postprandial period. They then also go on to referencing a paper by Rettler Slater, I can't pronounce that, 2011, who showed that co-ingestion of casein protein also causes a moderate but prolonged muscle protein synthesis effect compared to whey protein. So basically, for any of you who haven't got a clue what I just said, whey protein seems to be the best protein to cause a rapid spike in amino acid concentration and a rapid increase in MPS, but the downside is that it sort of rapidly drops off in the postprandial period. Conversely, casein protein sort of starts off slow, which isn't really that great, and then picks up supplying a prolonged supply of amino acids, likely due to the fact that when casein protein hits the stomach, it coagulates, so it sort of clots in the stomach, and that is why it gives a sort of prolonged release of amino acids. So, they each have their pros and cons, so which one is better? And this is where we have to go back again to that Kendra et al. 2016 paper, who finished off by referencing two key papers from both Wilkinson et al. 2007 and Hartman et et al. 2007, who showed that co-ingestion of whey protein and casein as a milk protein or a protein blend is superior for elevating muscle protein synthesis and muscle accretion after resistance exercise compared to soy protein. Overall, the authors then conclude that these findings suggest that milk proteins or milk protein blends that supply a mix of roughly 20% whey protein and 80% casein protein may be more effective for prolonging muscle protein synthesis response compared to taking either protein alone. So milk protein or the protein blend is better for a more prolonged muscle protein synthetic response than taking either just whey protein or casein protein on their own. Say what? mind-blowing. So overall, if you want the best protein supplement to help you hit that 1.6 grams per kilogram per day, although both whey and casein may be great sources of protein, there is emerging evidence slowly that protein blends, or milk proteins in particular, supplying a mix of both whey and casein, be better as you essentially get the benefits of both worlds. A whole new world. <laughs> <laughs>
So taking this into consideration, if you have a whey protein shake, it might actually be beneficial to take it with milk because you get the casein from the milk or to actually make your own protein shakes like the one I just had out of dairy products because for those of you who weren't aware, dairy products such as cheese, milk, yogurt, they already contain whey and casein protein. Dairy proteins are comprised of whey and casein in a ratio of 20% whey and 80% casein. So you are technically getting anabolic response from eating yogurt. <laughs> I heard rumors of some yogurt, some special kind of yogurt And I saw this store called Jogurt, could this be it? Jogurt But you know what I mean Anyway, the take home message is that protein shakes are nothing magical They are simply tools in your toolbox, your diet toolbox To help you reaching 1.6 grams per kilogram of protein per day So whether that be through food, through whey, through casein, through milk protein, through cheese, through yogurt, through sardines, whatever As long as you achieve that 1.6 grams per kilogram of body weight per day You are good to go making all kinds of gains Okay yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> I did it. Snap my damn shit up. So that is the end of the video. If you liked the video, then please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for the next video. Let me know what you want to see next. I really do appreciate your support. See you later. Hope y'all have a great day.